I'm Roman Yossi of the Nashville Predators. I'm Dante Fabro of the Nashville Predators. This is Philip Forsberg of the Nashville Predators. I'm Colton Sissons of the Nashville Predators. I'm Eustace Aros of the Nashville Predators. You're listening to the Renegades of Puck with Crazy Charlie. Welcome to the Bunker. Welcome to the Renegades of Puck podcast. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonny. And before we get started on the Half Step in Hockey coverage, first, let me direct you to our home website, renegadesofpuck.com. Once you go to renegadesofpuck.com, you'll learn everything you need to know about the show and what you're going to educate about the show. That's when you click on that merchandise tab. Take it straight to our classic logo t-shirt, our pride logo t-shirt, all of our different special event t-shirts, and so much more. All the gimmicks you couldn't know, love, and expect from the Renegades of Puck, like socks, throw pillows, wall art, bed sets, while they're all still available in our online store and will be in 2024. So please pick up some Renegades of Puck merch today. After all, we've sold out so that you can buy in. Social media is of critical importance to this operation, so listen up. Here's how you can support the Renegades of Puck. You can find us on Threads. You can find us on X. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram. You can also find us on TikTok. So please give us a like, a follow, a subscription, whatever it is. It doesn't take you but a second. It also doesn't cost you a single thing to help us out on social media. YouTube, stick, tap, love, respect all of our recent subscribers sure help sure appreciate the help closing out the year 2023 in a strong way and we look forward to picking up new subscribers in the year 2024 so again you can find us on youtube by just searching renegades of puck and please give us a subscription today and check out all the latest videos from the renegades puck you can also find the audio podcast closing out the year 2023 strong over 7.3 million replays and downloads for the year 2023 going from local to global in this year thanks to the full press nhl network and the full press predators podcast we sure to appreciate everyone that's checked out the show thank you so much google stitcher spotify amazon just a couple of different places you can find the renegades of puck podcast or just search renegades of puck in your preferred platform today venmo that's how you can financially support the renegades of puck just go to venmo and search renegades puck or scan the qr code that is currently on your screen every dollar goes a long way to helping the renegades of puck and thanks to generous renegades just like you watching and listening at home right now we've been able to make significant upgrades here to all of our technology behind the scenes and it has improved the entirety of the operation our efficiency is incredible right now and we are so thankful each and every one of you who's taken the time and donated a dollar every single dollar goes to helping the renegades of puck and again stick taps love and respect to each and every one of you who has been able to make a donation this year now for the last time in the year 2023 i know it's time for the no has seven hockey coverage so let me deliver this time for operation number 846 that's right time for show number 846 and at this moment in hockey history the national players currently find themselves in fourth place in the central division after 37 games skated their record of 20 16 and 1 41 points sees them six points behind the first place colorado avalanche on home ice, which is where the Preds' next game will take place. They have a record of 11-9. and nine. They've scored 116 goals on the season. They've also given up 116 goals on the season. That means they are completely even in the goal differential. Now, I mentioned that the National Preds are six points behind the Colorado Avalanche, so let's give you the most updated Central Division standings. The Avs are in first place with a record of 22-11-3. and three. 47 points has them one point ahead of the Winnipeg Jets, and they are also one point ahead of the Dallas Stars each with 46 points in the Preds with 41 points in fourth place six points back right now the Arizona Coyotes have 40 points in fifth place the St. Louis Blues have 37 points and are in sixth place Minnesota has 36 points in seventh place and the Chicago Blackhawks who are the National Predators next opponent have 24 points and are in eighth place after 35 games skated on season the Chicago Blackhawks have a record of 11 22 and 2 on the road, they have a record of 4-13-1, and, and their next game will be taking place at Bridgestone Arena. The Blackhawks have scored 86 goals this season. They've given up 129. That's a goal differential of negative a whole bunch. The Nashville Predators, once they wrap up this one game against the Chicago Blackhawks Thursday, they'll also host the Calgary Flames. By the way, welcome 2024. This game against the Chicago Blackhawks will be the first game of the calendar year 2024. The Calgary will be the second game of the year 2024, and so on and so on, and it continues. On the 9th of January, the Preds will face off against the Anaheim Ducks and then on the 12th of January they'll be in Dallas again so two times off to Dallas at the beginning of the month of January in the first 12 days the 13th of January we'll see the Preds host the New York Islanders on home ice now this is the third of four regular season meetings between the central division rivals let's go back to November the 18th when they played the first time it was the Predators defeating the Blackhawks 4-2 to at Bridgestone Arena Kevin Lankin got the start of the victory going 29 out of 31 Cole Smith picked up two goals in that game Trenton Nyquist also 
also with a goal apiece. It was Soderblom going 27 out of 30 for the Blackhawks, picking up the loss. It was Kurosheva Johnson picking up the goals for the Hawks in that game. And then a couple of weeks later, on the 5th of December, the two teams would meet again this time in Chicago. The Preds would score a 4-3 to three victory in the shootout. UC Soros this time picks up the victory, 25 out of 28. It was Luke Evangelista, Ryan O'Reilly, and Mark Jankowski, each with a goal in this game. Philip Forsberg had the shootout game-winning goal. Soderblom got the start and took the loss again against the National Predators, 27 out of 30. Felino with two goals. Dickinson with a goal for the Chicago Blackhawks in that game. So the Preds in two meetings against Chicago Blackhawks this year, 2-0. They picked up four points and have outscored the Hawks 8-5. to After this, they'll meet one more time. That will happen very near the end of the regular season schedule on April the 12th when the Preds will make their second and final trip of the season into Chicago to face off against the Blackhawks. Now, talking about the Blackhawks a whole bunch, let's go back and talk about their most recent five games. Back on the 19th of December, it was a 3-2 win versus the Colorado Avalanche. Follow that up on the 22nd of December with a 5-2 loss versus the Montreal Canadiens on the 23rd of December, 7-5 loss at the St. Louis Blues. And then take the Christmas break off, come back on the 27th with a 2-1 overtime win versus the Winnipeg Jets. Most recent Recent game finished was 12-29, 5-4 overtime loss at Dallas Sunday. Blackhawks are also in Dallas for their second consecutive game against the Stars in Dallas. We'll have updated standings and numbers on the Chicago Blackhawks on Monday afternoon after that game is completed on Sunday. Now. Taking a look at the matchup and the numbers as they are at this moment in hockey history, the Nashville Predators are currently scoring 3.08 goals per game. That's 20th best in the NHL. The Chicago Blackhawks are at 2.46 per game. That's 30th in the league. The Preds are giving up 3.14 goals against per game. That's 16th overall in the league right there in the middle of the pack, while Chicago is giving up 3.66. That is also 30th, second consecutive metric. That is 30th overall in the league. In the shots for category, the Preds generating 30.3 shots on goal per game. That is 20th best overall in the NHL while Chicago only generating 26.7. Yes, I say only because that's 31st, only one spot from last in the entire National Hockey League. In the shots against category, 30.6 for Nashville is 17th, and the shots against category for Chicago, 32.9. They are rated 28th overall in the NHL. When it comes to special teams, the Predators have the better of the metrics in both of these particular matchups. The power play is converting at 20.8%. That's 17th overall in the league, 27 out of 130 opportunities. The Chicago Blackhawks power play is a dreadful 12.8% conversion rate. That's 28th overall in the NHL. Only 14 conversions on the season on 109 power play opportunities. Now on the penalty kill, Preds killing off 76.9%. That's 25th. They have, though, given up 28 power play goals against them. That is a very high number. 75% is the kill rate for the Blackhawks. 27th is the ranking. 28 power play goals, the same exact number as the Nashville Predators in this one. So Chicago does not have a single statistical metric out of the six that we always talk about in the preview that is above 27th in the NHL. The Preds already being 2-0 and against the Blackhawks this year. They need to take care of their business on home ice and take care of that third victory in three games and sweep the home portion of the season series against this Chicago Blackhawks team who are currently in last place in the Central Division. Now, the individual statistics for both of these teams. Let's talk about the visiting Chicago Blackhawks. Connor Bedard, more than likely going to win the Rookie of the Year. 15 goals, 17 assists, 32 points on the season. Kersh have 6 goals and 15 assists for 21 points. Dickinson, 12 and 6 for 18. Felino, 8 goals. Two of his 8 goals came against the Nashville Predators this season, so watch out for him. Plus 9 assists for 17 points. And Johnson, 9 goals plus 4 assists for 13 points. Philip Forsberg continues to lead the Nashville Predators in scoring as he has done since the early portion of season 18 goals leads the Preds in that category 23 assists leads the Preds in that category and 41 points leads the Preds in that category he's got the trifecta going right now O'Reilly at 14 goals and 16 assists for 30 points. The captain, Roman Yossi's at 8 goals and 21 assists for 29 overall points. And Gus Nyquist, 8 goals and 19 assists for 27 points. Add Colton Sissons to round out the top five in scoring for the Predators at 11 goals and 9 assists for 20 points. Let's talk about those goaltenders and the potential matchup. I wrote down Soderblom's stats because he has gotten both starts against the Nashville Predators, losing on the 18th of November in Nashville and losing on the 5th of December in Chicago. Soderblom's numbers on the year 2 11 and 1 and 870 save percentage and a 4.15 goals against average wow i bet he wishes i didn't even bother to uncover that number johnson uh, and so soderblom so looking over the national purse side of the ledger 
The UC Soros anticipated to get the start in net 15, 13, and 1 on the season. A 9 on 1 save percentage, 3.02 goals against average with one shutout on the year. But I did want to update you on Yaroslav Askarov's statistics. 1-0-0 on the season. Now the 9.43 save percentage, 1.47 goals against average, picking up a victory in only his second ever NHL start. Second game appearing since getting called up from Milwaukee. Last game in relief for the third period, about 16 plus minutes. This game picks up the victory in the shootout. Let's go back and talk about that. I'm very excited about the National Purse Chicago Blackhawks kicking off 2024. But that's still a couple of days away from now. So I'm really more excited about talking about Yaroslav Askarov and the performance that he had in his first start of the season, the second start of his career. It's called the Reverse Sports Full Game Recap, and it happens immediately after this break on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. Hockey players are as unique as the game itself and your uniform should be tailored to fit you rebirth sports is your sports apparel tailor from shells bags warm-ups hats hoodies branding and more let rebirth sports be your custom hockey tailor and don't forget to tell them they do more than just hockey rebirth sports on facebook twitter and instagram rebirth sport a match made in hockey It's now time for the Reverb Sports Full Game Recap. We go all the way back to December 30th of the year 2023 when the Nashville Predators were closing out the regular season series in Washington against the Capitals and also closing out the 2023 schedule. Head coach Andrew Burnett deploys his lines in the following round, the second night of back-to-backs, Forsberg, O'Reilly, and Nyquist. Sherwood back in the lineup. Parson and Sissons are his line mates on the second line. Smith, Novak, and Evangelista on the third line. Trennan, McCarron, and Tomasino on your fourth line. Your defensive pairings are McDonough and Yossi, Luzon and Carey. Fabro and Shen. Barry is listed as day-to-day. Lankinen also listed as day-to-day. So Yaroslav Fiskarov gets his second ever NHL start, his first of this season. Just 15 seconds into the game, and it's Shepard coming up with a save on O'Reilly. First shot on goal of the game. 43 seconds into the first period, Shepard coming up with another save on Sherwood. 159 into the first period, Skarov coming up with a save on Sandin. His first save of the game at 254, 244 of the first period. Luke Evangelista's fifth goal of the season, a spinning rebound put back from the slot. Gives the Nashville Predators a 1-0 lead over the Caps at 3.52 of the first period. It's Shepard coming up with a save on Ryan McDonough at 5.03 of the first period. It's a, it's a scar off coming up with a save on Protos at 6.03 of the first period. So Betchkin off to the box. Two minutes for cross-check. And that's where we find the captain, Roman Yossi, burying his eighth goal. The season giving the Nashville Predators a 2-0 lead here early in the first period. He walked it to the middle, picked his place, and took a shot with good, healthy traffic in front of the net again. Yossi's Eighth goal. The season makes it 2-0 in favor of the National Predators on the power play. 8:48 into the first. Shepard save on Yossi. And this time 9:38. As Karl comes up with a save on Carlson at 10:25. Malastine comes up with his third goal of the season, getting the Washington Capitals on the board. 2-1 now in favor of the National Predators. This goal happened because, well, simply the National Predators were sloppy, choppy, and loose in their own defensive end, giving up multiple, multiple turnovers before the rebound put back can be easily finished off by Malastine. Good. Credit to the fourth line of the Washington Capitals. They were really bringing the jam and grinding, and they took the puck away from the Preds a couple times in their own zone. 2-1 hockey game now. 12:46 in the first period. McCarron off to the box. Two minutes for tripping. This penalty kill can only be described as excellent. Zero shots on goal. Sissons and Cole Smith absolutely doing dynamic work out there shorthanded. 16-13 of the first period. Shepard coming up with a save on McCarron, and then immediately after the shot, McCarron and Wilson are off to the box. Five minutes each. Not a whole lot to the fight. A lot of clutching. A lot of grab- grabbing a couple of punches while they were down. They certainly got the better of each other in the chirping department than they did in the punching department, but they're both off to the box for five minutes at 18.56 in the first period. Tiskarov coming over with a save on Ethan Bear at 19.57 of the first. Tiskarov coming over with a save on Carlson at the 20-minute mark. Luzon and Edmondson off to the box, two minutes each for a roughing. I felt like this was the easy way out for the officials. Many players were involved in the end of the period scrum, and it was definitely initiated by Edmondson on Luzon. I felt this was the easy way out for the situation. We'll start the second period with some four-on-four hockey, but the first period will wrap up with the Preds having a two-goal lead, two-to-one lead, that is, and the Washington Capitals out shooting the Preds 12 to 11, 18 seconds into the second period. This is during four-on-four hockey. Shepard comes up with a save on Forsberg at 35 second mark of the second. Askarov comes up with a save on Kuznets off the 148 mark of the second period. Shepard comes up with a save on Yossi. We return to five-on-five even strength hockey, and at 329 we see Shepard coming with a save on Luke Evangelista at the 
622 mark of the second period. It's Shepard coming up with a save on Luzon at 729 of the second period. It's Askarov coming up with a save on the jam attempt after the shot goes off of the post, lands behind him, and he has to dive backwards on top of the puck carry with the goal line support from the defensive standpoint. There, great job right there supporting his young rookie goaltender. Come up with a save, 917 in the second period. Shepard comes up with a save on McCarron Tomasino. Set this play up off the half wall. The delay, the hole, the setup of the pass, all of it was the excellence of execution by Philip Tomasino and McCarron. Got a really good, strong shot off right here, but Shepard gets the best of everyone. 12-27 now of the second period, and it's Shepard coming up with a save on Ryan McDonough at the 12-56 mark of the second period. It's Luke Evangelista off to the box. Two minutes for holding an outstanding penalty kill by the National Predators. They would not allow a single shot on goal, but unfortunately for the Nashville Predators on what we'd like to call the continuation just a couple of seconds after the power play expired with Washington still holding the puck possession and a distinct advantage. Ovechkin capitalizes officially at 14.59 of the second period, his seventh goal of the season, tying the game up at two apiece. And you know exactly what the play was. A one-time bomb from the left circle and welcome to the club, Yaroslav, number 171 in the goalies that have given up a goal to Alex Ovechkin club. So we are now tied at two apiece in the second period. We move to the 16-30 mark of the second. That's when Shepard comes up with a save on O'Reilly's wraparound attempt. O'Reilly checked the short side, then decided to try the wraparound. Got shut down by Shepard. Either way, he decided. 16-44. Shepard robs Tommy Novak at the back door. Maybe not quite enough sauce on that pass from Forsberg, but Novak got a good look at the back post, and Shepard was there to deny. 17-03 of the second period. Shepard comes up with the save on Luke Evangelis. 18-05 of the second period. That's Saskaroff coming up with the save on Malice Stein, 1858, another save on Edmondson and in 1957. Shepard comes up with a save on Luzon from the half wall. Never hurts to throw it on net. And this shot had more trouble than you would expect at the end of the period. The Nashville Purs are now out shooting Washington 25 to 17. So the Caps only get five shots on goal in the second period, but they do pick up the goal to tie the game. We flip the sheet over and we start with the third period. And we are one minute and one second on to that clean sheet. And it's Shepard back to work coming up with a save on Jeremy Luzon at 129 of the third period. Zaskarov coming up with a save on McMichael. 206. Zaskarov coming up with a save on Kuznetsov at 401 of the third period. It's McMichael off to the box. Two minutes for holding, but it would be the Nashville Predators coming up with the big time stops right here as the rookie netminder would come up with a save on Kuznetsov. Then another save on Dowd and the Nashville Predators on the entirety of their two minute power play would not generate a single shot on goal. That's right. Not a single shot on goal for the Preds, but two for the Washington Capitals shorthanded. 707 of the third period. It's Shepard coming up with a save on Tommy Novak. At 720 of the third period, it's Saskaroff coming up with a save on Edmondson. 748, Shepard, a save on Forsberg. Teams trading chances back and forth here in the middle of the third period. The 901 mark of the third, and Shepard coming up with a save on Yakov. Trennan's wrist shot at 1026 of the third period. It's Saskaroff coming up with a save on Jensen's long, heavy shot at the 1138 mark of the third period. It's Shepard coming up with a save on Luke Shen. 1302, Shepard back to work. This time a save on Philip Forsberg. 1541, another Another big time save on Yakov Trennan. Then 1632, Shepard yet another save on Philip Forsberg's redirect from close range. Now, at 1859 of the third period, when it seemed like things were settling down and the teams were just going to go ahead and get a point and split this thing later on, at 1859, it's Alex Ovechkin seeming to get on the board. It was on a delayed call. Ovechkin jumps off of the bench. Delayed call was going to be on Luke Shen. Ovechkin off of the bench, able to finish off the play. This was reviewed. Initially, not understood what they were reviewing it for. Turns out they were reviewing it for goaltender interference. They ruled it was goaltender interference. They took the goal off of the board. So instead of it being 3-2 to two and Ovechkin having his second goal of the game, we go back to a 2-2 two to two hockey game, put 19 minutes, one minute left on the clock in the third, and Shen in the box for two minutes. The official call is hooking 2-2 two to two hockey game. At the end of regulation, because the Predators would prevent getting any shots for the Washington Capitals on their power play for that minute. The Nashville Predators are out shooting the Washington Capitals 33-26. to Both teams earn a point. We'll settle the third point in overtime. The carryover of one minute into OT means instead of the three-on-three, we'll start with the four-on-three. And Scaroff is coming up with a big save on Carlson. Sharp angle, heavy shot. And they go to even strength hockey, which is now four-on-four hockey. And would remain that way for quite some time as the teams would skate up 
up and down, and it got kind of scary for a couple of minutes for both teams, but they weren't really getting the clean scoring chance. 3.56 of the overtime period. It's Shepard coming out with save on Forsberg, and this rush plus the jam was simply incredible. If Forsberg could have finished this one off, this one would have been on the season-ending highlight reel. There is no doubt about that. Philip Forsberg makes a couple of sick moves through the defenders that almost stuffs the puck home on the goal line. At 4.10 of overtime, Sasscroft coming up with a save on Wilson. We hit the end of overtime. We'll go to a shootout. Shots on goal for the game. 34 for Nashville, 28 for the Washington Capitals. Now, going into the shootout, the Washington Capitals are going to shoot first, and it's Kuznetsov coming in with the slowest move you've seen since Ryan Johansson, and he gets stopped by Yaroslav Askarov, and then Nyquist goes for the Nashville Predators, goes bar down, converting also with the slow and low move, picks his spot with a wrist shot, and converts, putting the Preds up 1-0 in the shootout. Ovechkin then takes the opportunity and is shut down by his countrymate. O'Reilly then finishes the shootout with the wrist shot again, beating Shepard. 2-0 is the shootout win. 3-2 is officially the win for the National Predators in the shootout. Shots on goal for the game 34-28. Yaroslav Askarov gets his first ever victory in the NHL and only his second career start and he stops two of the most famous countrymen he will ever get a chance to play against in the NHL. We've got so much more coming up on this game on the Renegades of Puck podcast. Analysis box score and more coming up next. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Tracy, owner operator of Strong Style Fitness. And that's me and my training assistant Rizzo. And we are here to bring you fitness that meets you where you are by offering circuit classes, bar inspired classes, to bottle workouts, boot camps, guided stretching, and more, all taught by a certified personal trainer, me. To learn more, go to our website, strongstylefit.com. Subscribe on YouTube at Strong Style Fitness. Follow on social media at Strong Style Fit. But most importantly, let's get you moving. It doesn't matter if it's your first workout or you've been doing it for years. Strong Style Fitness has the workout that meets you on your journey and helps you along the path to a happier, healthier life. I understand where you've been what you were going through, and where you were going. And I want to take you there. We'll see you on the mat. Welcome back in Renegades of Puck podcast. Yaroslav Askarov, 27 out of 29. Two goals against. He stopped Ovechkin and Kuznetsov in the shootout. Picks up his first career victory. And I've got to tell you, uh, this is highly impressive stuff. And it's going to make the rounds uh, back in his home country. Absolutely for sure. Um, One of the greatest players ever to come out of uh, his nation. Perhaps the man who will be the all-time leading scorer in the NHL as far as goals. Uh, Askarov shuts him down the shootout does surrender one goal to him in regulation and uh, you gotta admit now that the game's over and the Preds were able to secure the two points pretty cool to see the two of them we talked about an awful lot on the preview and it was pretty cool to see them go up head to head against each other Ovechkin at one point going up to Askarov putting a little shoulder into him and saying a little welcome to the NHL or or something to that effect You, you never quite know but uh, Ovechkin versus Askarov was everything it, that you had hoped it to be. Ovechkin does beat him once, actually beats him twice, but the goaltender interference takes that goal off of the board. And in the shootout, it is Askarov getting the big stop right there. You know that's going to make all the highlight reels back home. That's going to be a huge moment. I, I cannot imagine a better way for Yaroslav Askarov to pick up his first victory in the NHL than to do it against the Washington Capitals, Ovechkin, Kuznetsov, and to pick up the shootout win. And he was, again, wild stick handling coming out of the net uh, it was it, it's a ride you got to make sure your seatbelts uh, on tight and you're strapped in when you see Haskaroff out there on the rink he's got all the tools all the skills and he's got just a little bit of that chaos magic in him uh, that I think is going to make him something incredibly special special night for this net miter special night for this franchise to see him pick up his first victory 27 out of 29 in this game let's talk about some other storylines coming out of this one Luke Evangelista the head coach put the call out to the youth of this team and said I need more and it was Luke Evangelista that answered that phone call and he picks up a goal in this game with the spinning jam also generates four shots on goal that spinning jam right there in the slot highly impressive play he was a whirlwind in the middle of 
defenders, and he found a way to get to the loose puck, spin, get himself in body position, shoot the puck, and finish the play uh, as if it was almost nothing there. And he only had 10.40 in time on ice. I'd seriously like to see him tick up in time on ice. But maybe after this goal, he'll have a little bit more confidence, and maybe the coaching staff will also have a little bit more confidence. But Luke Evangelista, one of the players of the youth side of this roster who answered the call that the head coach had put out. The captain, Roman Yossi, picks up the other goal in this game on the power play, did what he does best, controlled the play, set it up, walked it to the middle, and took a hell of a shot right there for another goal. Three block shots in this game as well, 26-51 in total time on the second night of back-to-backs. Two games in 24 hours, and it went, both of them go to overtime. This one goes to a shootout. The captain, Roman Yossi, is there for every second of it, leading his squad to a victory, and also picked up a fight over the weekend. So the captain, Roman Yossi, now at 29 points after picking up his eighth goal in this game in Washington. Nyquist and O'Reilly. Shootout precision is the note that I made. Nyquist comes in with the slow and low, picks his spot bar down, wrist shot, just perfection. And then O'Reilly, very similar to that move and the Nashville Purrs win the shootout 2-0 in this game we've already talked about how Askarov shut down the Russians from the Washington Capitals but Nyquist and O'Reilly the free agents the mercenaries who come in this season for the Nashville Purrs are performing at such a high level and it was such professionalism and precision to see out there on the rink from the Predators in the shootout they handled themselves quite expertly and Nyquist another strong game he had maybe the strongest weekend of uh, of any of the Nashville Predators back-to-back games picks up another assist in this game and again impressive stuff Nyquist 1926 in total time on ice 217 on the power play and again Nyquist is on a, on a streak right now and he is a, a player that maybe you didn't want it but you got to admit you're falling in love with him more and more every shift out there Sherwood another young player he got the healthy scratch and he answered the call as well four shots on goal five hits 1401 total time on ice a strong return from the healthy scratch Sherwood highly noticeable in this game he had his legs under him he had the healthy scratch last night in Detroit so he should have looked really good in this game he was set up for success by his coaching staff getting him in there on the second night of back-to-backs being fresh and the way he likes to bring the energy and the way he likes to play uh, this set up perfectly for him and he was very noticeable in this game and again that should be a good confidence builder for Sherwood four shots on goal and five hits in 14 minutes of time on ice that's a good good strong return from that healthy scratch. So Evangelista and Sherwood answer the call. Nyquist and O'Reilly bring the precision and professionalism. And Askarov gets his first ever victory. The Nashville Predators, they get out of Washington with two points. They pick up three out of four over the weekend. And just before we wrap up the analysis portion of this thing, I just want to mention Luzon again. Listen, he's not perfect, you know? He's out there an awful lot of minutes. He's playing good hard D, and he makes a lot of solid plays. Uh, he makes mistakes from time to time, but five block shots in this game, four hits, four sixteen in total time on ice shorthanded. Another just steady, steady performance. And, yes, I know he was responsible for the multiple turnovers that led to Washington's first goal, but, again, he's not perfect, but that's a hell of a stat line to put up for the second night of back-to-backs. That's going to do it for the analysis of things. we got to get on to the box score, the good cold hard numbers, and we got to hear from our tremendous friends for the last time in the year 2023, our great friends at Stripe Digital Solutions. We'll take a quick break right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. The digital environment can be quite intimidating, time-consuming, and cumbersome, especially with all those other areas that need attention at your business, and that's why Stripe Digital Solutions is here to help. I know because that's exactly what Stripe Digital Solutions did for me and the Renegades of Puck. From designing my home website and helping me create my merchandise to special event posters, brand building, and social media management, but it's not just that, it's so much more. Stripe Digital Solutions has helped me every step of the way. From startup to full-time operation, Stripe Digital Solutions has been there to assist and advise every single step of the journey. In today's fast-paced world, the path to success is having a strong digital partner and nobody is better in the trenches than Brandy and Stripe Digital Solutions. Get the solution before it's even a problem with Stripe Digital Solutions. Talking about the good cold hard numbers known as the box score right here on the Renegades of Puck podcast. Luke Evangelista picks up a goal in this game. The captain, Roman Yossi, also picks up a goal going over to the assist category. It is Tommy Novak. All he does 
is make plays. Nyquist also picks up an assist. O'Reilly picks up an assist. Dante Fabro picks up an assist. Fabro and Carey, I should talk about this more on the physical component of things, but Fabro and Carey just took an absolute beating out there on the rink tonight and continued making plays while taking just massive crunches along the boards all night long. And the shots on goal category, Philip Forsberg jumping out way high above everybody else with eight shots on goal in this game. You will find a trio with four, though, in the forwards. Luke Evangelista, again, good performance, coming back and answering the call. Ryan O'Reilly always bringing the jam. He picks a four. Sherwood brings a four coming back from the healthy scratch. Good to see that jam out there on the rink. It was Luzon with three shots on goal leading the defenseman. When it comes to block shots, it was Luzon with five and then Yossi with three. You won't find anybody else on the team above two, but the twos are Shen and Sissons. The twos are Shen. Oh, man. There's so many jokes right there. So many jokes right there. When it comes to the physical component and the hits category, leading was Sherwood. It was not Luzon in this game. Luzon does check in at second, so Sherwood had five. Luzon had four. Jakob Trennan also had four. McCarron had three. Luke Shen had three in this game. So Sherwood bringing five hits, leading in that category. When it comes to the time on ice, leaders, second night of back-to-backs. Last night, I thought Andrew Burnett did a good job in Detroit of managing the time on ice. Only one forward was over 20 minutes. And again, on the second night of back-to-backs, only one forward over 20 minutes, and it happens to be Ryan O'Reilly, who I feel like can skate all day and night long, even at his advanced age. It's so ancient. About 1926, time on ice for Nyquist, 1844, Phil uh, Forsberg on the defensive side of things, Captain Roman Yossi. That truly is a hockey player and a human being that can skate forever. 26, 51 in total time on ice. McDonough had 24 minutes. Carrier had 20 minutes and 20 seconds in total time on ice. When it comes to the special teams, power play, 217 across the board for the forwards of Forsberg, of Nyquist, of O'Reilly, and of Sissons, 252 for the captain, Roman Yossi. That power play did go one of two and convert the penalty kill time on ice leaders, 416 for Luzon, 318 for McDonough, 227 for Alex Carey, 322 for Colton Sissons, and 253 for Cole Smith. They went three of three in this game, only giving up one shot on goal. The one asterisk you do have to put, though, they did give up a goal on the continuation, largely the same unit. They were unable to get the change. It was only a couple of seconds after the penalty expired. But still, three out of three technically, only giving up one shot on goal. And that includes a minute of shorthanded time in overtime. Face-off winning percentage, 60.7%. Good to see the Nashville Predators back in the positive direction in that category. One of the reasons they were able to win this game. Block shots, 17 hits, 23. Takeaways, six giveaways, nine. That's going to do it for the box score. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, wait. We left off one thing. Yaroslav Askarov, 27 out of 29. Two goals against a 931 save percentage for this individual game. 26 even strength saves. One power play save. One shorthand save. And his first career National Hockey League victory. Impressive stuff for the young netminder of the Nashville Predators. That's going to do it for the box score. Listen, let's go ahead and close this thing out. Three out of four points over the weekend. Uh, Listen, the Predators could have easily picked up all four of those points. And you know what? They easily could have ended up with no points, by the way, they played in some of the stretches of the game. Not the best example of their best hockey over the last two games. But they found a way to get three out of the four points on the road in a back-to-back situation to close out the 2023 calendar. You got to give them the stick taps for that. They found a way, and they're moving up in the standings. Now back to fourth place in the Central Division, only six points behind first place Colorado. So the Preds did find a way, and they got three out of the four points, and it's exactly what they needed to do on this road trip. And again, not their best hockey, but they got 75% of the points that were available. And let's talk about quickly before we head out of the bunker, the 2023 turnaround. This franchise was absolutely sliding off into irrelevance and complete non-existence at the beginning of the year 2023. The team started to make the turnaround as the winter turned into the spring. There were bold moves. There were significant trades that were made. Matthias Ekholm no longer a part of the Nashville Predators after that point in time. And so many others, including Juneau, including Niederreiter. And it kept on going from there. And it continued continued as the youth got the opportunity the Predators almost found themselves in a playoff spot at the end of last season everything continued over the summer as John Hines was removed Andrew Burnett was hired Barry Trotz came in for a retiring David Poyle trades were made again signings were made O'Reilly Nyquist brought in in the offseason by Barry Trotz And the 2023 turnaround, what was expected to be a full rebuild that 
classically at the National Hockey League level takes somewhere between three and five years and is painful. It usually includes completely bottoming out and losing all of your known and named players, which for the National Predators may have included over the next season or two, UC Soros, Philip Forsberg, Roman Yossi. But the Nashville Predators have come in at the beginning of this sp- season, the first half of the schedule that took place in the year, back end of 2023, and have been exceptional. 37 games played. They have a record of 20-16-1. and 41 points has them six points out of first place, and they currently hold a wild card spot, and there's no reason to believe they cannot continue competing as Andrew Burnett continues growing as the first-year head coach, as Barry Trotz continues growing as a first-year GM, and as this team continues growing, both on the veteran side with the chemistry and on the youth side with gaining more and more experience everything about the year 2023 for this national Predators team has been absolutely fascinating we will look back on this calendar year for so many years to come and talk about the storylines that emerged from this and we'll just talk alone about the draft picks tanner Janot brought for years to come years to come that will continue to make this team better so the national Predators in 2023 went from absolutely bottoming out, deciding it was time for the rebuild, and now in less than half a season, they're already competitive and holding a playoff spot. I can't wait to cover the second half of this season. Being on this beat is so fascinating. It was so consistently stagnant for about five years, and now it is unique and interesting in every way, almost every day. Today, I got to cover an NHL prospect getting his first ever victory at the NHL level, and I get to continuously see interesting, unique young players and one of the best in the NHL and Philip Forsberg uh, on a nightly basis. So 2023, just fascinating. 2023 also being the year that the show went from local to global thanks to the Full Press NHL Network and Full Press Predators podcast. So again, we thank each and every one of you. Well over 7 million downloads and replays for the year. That has allowed us a certain flexibility and a certain amount of freedom and control over what we do here. We could not have done that without each and every one of you. We could not have done that without our partnership with the Full Press NHL Network. Stick taps, love, and respect, my good renegades. Happy New Year, please. Be safe, stay healthy, stay out of trouble on New Year's Eve. Go have fun, but make sure you don't drive. Make sure you don't drink and drive. Make sure if you do go out and drink, make sure you have a safe ride home. Make sure you grab an Uber, grab a cab, get a hotel, do whatever you got to do. Make sure you're safe, make sure you're ready. Predators are back on the ice on Tuesday night. We'll be back in the bunker on Monday to check up on each and every one of you, give you the most updated standings on New Year's Day as a lot of people are going to start to roll back in. I'm your host and captain, Crazy Charlie Sonia. Happy New Year, Renegades 2023 was awesome 2024 gonna be even better with even more no half stepping